Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick introduction for Project 3. This is a research proposal which, if you're a junior or a senior, you may have already done one of these or something similar to this. Um, but if not, if this is, you know, if you're first or second year, then, then this may be something that's new to you. Um, so what we're going to be doing in for Project 3 is really kind of a setup for Project 4, right? So Project 4 is, is more of a research, uh, a traditional research paper. And um, we, you'll have more uh, kind of leeway to be able to do much more of a traditional paper there. But there are a couple things we need to do before that because Project 3 is really kind of entwined with Project 4. Project 3 is really entwined, entwined with Project 4. You have to kind of do the work for Project 3 before you can do it for Project 4. So the a couple of things that we need to do is you need to identify a, a, a historical artifact. It used to say and, I'm sorry, it's just in my brain. A historical artifact. Um, and, and there are some, some kind of guidelines or maybe some ideas, maybe some ways that you might want to pursue identifying that historical artifact. Um, in Canvas, I've got a, a page up there. I'd be glad to help you if you get stuck and, and, and not quite sure what I mean by historical artifact. It really is, is a kind of a fairly broad, uh, mm, kind of a broad scope. Um, you can pretty much choose anything you want as long as it's related to your career field and has some kind of impact on the way that people in your career field do their work. Uh, so, so that so once you identify that for Project Four, then you'll you'll be ready to start with Project Three, right? So you got to do a little bit of groundwork. You have to kind of have a through line, kind of your thesis almost have set up for Project Three and Four before you can get going with Three. So what I want you to do for Project Three is to to kind of give me, kind of you're asking almost asking permission for, um, and kind of feedback, getting a little bit of feedback and a little bit of uh, permission about how you would want to proceed with your research that you're going to do. Now, if you're gonna, if you are going to like into grad school or something, and you're gonna um, want to do some kind of a larger project, you're gonna want to do some research. If you're gonna do like a PhD project or something like that, you're definitely gonna have to do a uh, a research proposal because what you're asking from the faculty or from the school or from maybe some some kind of corporation or business, you're actually asking them for money, is uh, the resources that you're gonna need to be able to. Um, carry out the research that you, you want to do, right? So you're, you might need lab space, you might need um, some uh, resources, some uh, money or access to uh, research participants, or I don't know what it's gonna be. So that's what kind of what a research proposal is for. Um, doing a research proposal for a, a written experiment like this, or a written paper like this is really kind of a, 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 a um, an exercise in just going through the go, going through this process to understand what it takes as much as it is um, the actual project because I, I think anybody can probably put together a pretty decent um, uh, written written paper a research paper without having to do this proposal but I just want you to get the experience of, of doing it to understand what it's about um, so once you've identified your historical artifact, now you can start to propose what kind of research that you want to do. Of course, here it's going to be a literature review mainly. It's going to be uh, maybe some interviews that you're going to use. Maybe uh, the interview that you did for Project 2 will be helpful here. I don't know. Um, and then, then you can get going with this. So I, I've got a couple of examples in Canvas of a uh, research proposals, how you might think about doing uh, setting this up. Uh, within this introduction, I've got kind of a really kind of a, a really bare bones kind of way you might want to break it down, and, and this is it's really up to you how you do it. There's no uh, set format or, or style or guidance on how you're going to do this. This is really up to you and what your needs are. Probably the one in Canvas here uh, under where this video is uh, housed is probably going to be good enough for you. So the way we might want to break it down is you know if you're going to have APA formatted paper, you're going to have a title page, or MLA is going to have you know the um, the the structure of a of MLA that first page you just need to have that um, you may need an abstract although uh, I, d I don't think you're gonna need one I, I'm not gonna require one for this paper but you know an abstract is you know the 250 300 word kind of a, a summary of, of the totality of, of what this research proposal would be I don't really think you need one for here but if you want to do it just for practice go ahead um, 
you, of course, you're going to have some kind of an introduction where you're going to, to introduce the project that you think that you want to do in, in broad terms uh, and kind of explain why you think it's going to be of value. The research that you would do would be of value. Um, next, you, what you're going to do is your literature review. And so what you're going to, what the literature review is about is telling your, the, uh, the person giving you permission or the, that you're trying to, um, you know, get, get access for, for research. Uh, what, what you're going to do is, is, is tell your, this person or this committee or whoever it is going to be, hey, look, I've already done a bunch of reading. I, I've got a pretty good sense of what's happening um, in this career field according to um, the, the literature that's out there. I, I've got a really good sense of what's happening. This is what I think is, is going on. Um, and this is kind of where we are in the state of whatever my career field is, right? Whatever the research that you think you want to do. So that's what the literature review is to show that you've already done the work, that you're not just jumping into this blindly, um, going to just recreate somebody else's work, um, which is kind of a waste of everyone's time and effort, really, and the resources. So that's what you want to do. All right, so in a, me in a research proposal, the next step would kind of be the method. You're going to say, this is how I will go about doing my research. And for, for most of you here, this is all just going to be uh, literature-based. You know, the method that I'm going to use for this is um, to do research. I've, I've done, um, you know, scholarly journals, books, and, you know, newspaper magazines, whatever it's going to be, uh, or interviews that you've done. This is going to be where you're going to talk about how you think you're going to go about doing that. Um, the results section would be where you're going to, you know, tell tell what you you expect is going to be the outcome um, before you do because you 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 won't have done it. So there's really not um, any kind of um, findings that you're going to have for this. So you kind of got to jump into it and, and say, this is what I think the results of this is going to be. Um, and then your discussion is going to be kind of where the discussion section might be, how you think that you're, the research you're going to do is going to um, kind of nest in with the rest of the, the similar research that's being done within your career field. So um, w why is this unique? Why does this parallel what somebody else is doing? Why is this going to be helpful to people in your career field? So that's that discussion section. Um, and probably the biggest part of this <clears throat> and the one that I think is going to take as m most of your time is the annotated bibliography. Um, and so the annotated bib is, there's some examples of it on the page here and I've got, I can give you more examples, but, but really what that is, is you're going to do, find some, some sources, some, some scholarly sources. Um, hopefully they're going to be more scholarly than not. And then you're going to read them and then you are going to annotate them in a way that, that is shown on, on these pages. So what it's going to be is either MLA or APA, probably for most of you, APA formatted, um, uh, references list citation is going to go at the top. And then you're going to kind of discuss what is happening. You're going to kind of give a, a summary of whatever this, the, the research or whatever the, the, the journal article, the newspaper article is. You're going to say, you know, what it means, what impact it has on your career field. And then for me, what I want to see is this, we want it to be an, an evaluative um, annotated bibliography. And what that, and so what that means, the difference is you have descriptive kinds and you have evaluative. The evaluative uh, annotated bibliography is at the end of that annotated bib, about a paragraph or so's length of annotation that you're going to do. The, the last pair, couple sentences, sentence or two, maybe, will be, you telling me why you think or your reviewer of this um, research proposal you're going to tell them why you think that the work is going to be of value right to, to why this source is going to be of value to your research that you propose to do which will be for project four so you, i need you to you know look at some of the examples that i have um and, but just understand that what you're trying to do is say um, i think this research is going to be valuable or this literature is going to be valuable to the research that I'm going to do. Um, so, so the benefit of doing this is that you're, I'm already going to kind of force you to start doing the research that you need to do for the project four. And then also you should have, this should kind of help you with your uh, references list or works cited list that you're going to have for the paper. So hopefully you see the way I've got it stacked up is, is I'm not asking you to do busy work just for the sake of busy work. This is, this should help you so that you don't have to do um, more work down the road. Um, you've already got your, basically your references list built for project four by the time you get to it. So, um, and hopefully some of the work that you've done in this annotated bibliography can transfer at least loosely to the writing that you're going to do for your paper. So, um, hopefully this is a helpful introduction to project three. Um, I know it's probably a little different if we were doing it in class, it would probably be a lot easier and I could come around and talk to you individually specifically, but that's why I would do my online, um, uh, online 
office hours, virtual office hours, to make sure that you, if you do have questions, you just let me know and we can help you out. All right, well, um, good luck with this. If you have any questions, let me know.